Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about a feature from AWS Private Certificate Authority, support for the Online Certificate Status Protocol, or OCSP. In this video, we will explore what OCSP is, what AWS PCA supports, how it is different from other options that you have for checking revocation status, and a short demonstration of the feature. So first, what is OCSP? The Online Certificate Status Protocol is a protocol used for obtaining the revocation status of an X509 digital certificate. With OCSP, a client or an application sends a request to an OCSP responder in order to get the status of a given certificate. The OCSP responder will then verify the status of that certificate with its certificate authority, and then it will return a response of good, revoked, or unknown to the client. So what does AWS PCA support? PCA provides a fully managed OCSP solution to notify endpoints that certificates have been revoked without the need for customers to operate the infrastructure themselves. Customers can enable OCSP on new or existing CAs with a single operation using the AWS Private CA Console, the API, the CLI, or through AWS CloudFormation. When you enable OCSP for a certificate authority, AWS PCA includes the URL of the OCSP responder and the authority information access extension of each new certificate issued. The extension allows clients such as web browsers to query the responder and determine whether an end entity or subordinate CA certificate can be trusted. You might be wondering, why is this important? Prior to this launch, AWS PCA customers could only use certificate revocation lists to check the revocation status for certificates issued by PCA. Now you have the option to use certificate revocation lists, OCSP endpoints, or both. Speaking of certificate revocation lists, let's take a minute to talk about CRLs and how they are different from OCSP endpoints. As stated previously, AWS PCA also supports another method to manage certificate revocation, Certificate Revocation Lists, or CRLs. For those who are not familiar, a Certificate Revocation List is a list maintained by a certification authority of the certificates which it has issued that are revoked prior to their stated expiration date. In the case of AWS Private CA, when you set up a CRL, this list is maintained in an S3 bucket. A CRL functions slightly differently than an OCSP responder. With OCSPs, an endpoint is queried by a client, and then the client receives a response. With CRLs, a certificate revocation list is downloaded by a client. This behavior allows clients to cache CRLs, improving resilience to network issues. However, if CRLs are cached for too long, it can lead to stale lists. Another consideration is that CRLs can become large and become problematic for devices with little memory. Conversely, this allows clients to verify many certificates at one time, whereas an OCSP endpoint will only give you one response per request. If you would like to dive deeper into the differences between these two revocation methods, check out the AWS blog post choosing the right certificate revocation method in ACM Private CA. For our demo today, we are going to walk through the process of creating a subordinate or issuing certificate authority, which has OCSP enabled. This demo assumes that you already have a root certificate authority provisioned in your account. If you would like to follow along, we will be using the same infrastructure that is built in the AWS Private CA workshop. We will start by navigating to the Private Certificate Authority console. We already have a root certificate authority provisioned in this account, so I'm going to go ahead and create our issuing CA. First, I'll select Create a Private CA. Next, I will choose the Subordinate option. For the information in the Subject Distinguished Name options, I'm going to enter some placeholder values. You must enter at least one name on this page, but all others are optional. I will leave the key algorithm option as the default RSA 2048 
and then I will select the checkbox next to Turn on OCSP under Certificate Revocation Options. I'll leave the rest of the options as default, acknowledge the pricing agreement, and create my CA. Once we have created a subordinate CA, we will use the root CA to sign and install a certificate. First, I'll select Actions and then Install CA Certificate. I'll use the root CA in my account and then specify a validity date at least 13 months in advance of today's date. Then I'll select Confirm and Install to continue. Next, I will issue a certificate for my newly created CA to an application load balancer in my account so I can successfully create an HTTPS connection. I'll need to get the DNS name of my load balancer to issue this certificate, so first I'll go to the EC2 console and then select Load Balancers to locate the appropriate DNS name listed. In order to generate a certificate, I'll need to head back to the ACM console. When I get to the ACM console, I'll choose the Request a Certificate option and select Private Certificate. I want to use my issuing CA, so I click the drop down menu and then select the subordinate CA I just created. Under Fully Qualified Domain Name, I will enter the domain name for my application load balancer. I'll then select Request and wait for the certificate to be issued. Next, I'll create an HTTPS listener for the load balancer. The load balancer will use the server certificate we just issued to terminate the front end connection and then decrypt requests from clients before sending them to the targets. To add a listener, I'll need to navigate back to my application load balancer. When I get to the application load balancer, I'll select Add Listener. I'll then change the protocol to HTTPS and the default action to forward. Next, I'll select a target group to forward my traffic to. Under the default SSL TLS certificate section, I will select the name of the certificate we just issued. I will continue and add the listener. Now we have an ALB serving HTTPS traffic using our issued certificate from our private certificate authority. I'll navigate to the DNS name of our load balancer and see that we are now able to establish an HTTPS connection. Please note that in order for this to work, you will have to import the root certificate into your browser. Now we will revoke the certificate to demonstrate the OCSP functionality. To do this, we can run the revoke certificate AWS CLI command. We will need to get the certificate authority ARN, the certificate serial, and provide a reason for the revocation when we run this command. All of this information is available via the ACM console under the description of the issued certificate. Once I've copied the serial number in the Certificate Authority ARN, I can run the Revoke Certificate command. Please know that it may take some time for the revocation to propagate. Once it does, as long as my browser is set up to query the OCSP endpoint, 
I will be able to see that the certificate has been revoked. And that's it. We've set up a fully managed OCSP solution on AWS PCA, all with a few clicks in the console. If you'd like to learn more about AWS PCA, please check out the AWS PCA documentation or the AWS PCA workshop.